one of 20 charities stands to make 100 pounds as 20 roadsters hot-footed round Auckland's top of the town course. Run as a charity event by the Kerang Happy Road Businessmen's Association, the race features speedsters Peter Snell, Barry McGee and Bill Bailey. In the early stages, number 15, Bill Bailey, shows the boys the way home, with Peter Snell back in the pack. But as more of the course vanishes underfoot, Bill Bailey has to slam on the pace to catch fast man Snell, now out front. He makes it. Then it's a three-man duel with Don Weiberg, number 12, and Jeff Julian, number 18, attempting to show Bill Bailey a clean pair of heels, each determined to win 100 pounds for the charity he represents. It's a handicap event. First home gets the cup and maybe the 100 pounds. And now down crowded wet Kerang Happy Road to the tape found speedsters Bailey and Snell. And yes, it's Snell's race, but only just. Barry McGee is third. Snell ate up the two and a half mile course in 11 minutes flat to win the cup while Ian Studd took the handicap event and 100 pounds for the intellectually handicapped children. Once again, Peter Snell has proved he's the man to watch. In spite of the rain, large crowds turn out to farewell Viscount and Viscountess Cobham on their last drive through Wellington. At the airport, His Excellency inspects a guard from Queen Alexandra's squadron, Royal New Zealand Armoured Corps. One of our most popular governors, Lord Cobham, has endeared himself to New Zealanders by his mastery of everything from speech making to cricket. The farewell ceremonies take place indoors. His Excellency takes leave of Mr. Nordmeyer, acting leader of the opposition, and Sir John Collins, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, and Lady Collins. Accompanying their parents are Catherine and the twins, Lucy and Sarah. In a hat-clutching farewell on the tarmac, their Excellencies say goodbye to Mr. Hannon, acting Prime Minister, Mrs. Hannon, and Mrs. Holyoke. They board their RNZAF plane en route to Australia and wave goodbye to the people of New Zealand. Playing in the water is great fun, and during the summer most New Zealanders will be taking to the tide, either swimming or boating. Last year, the death roll from drowning was 122. Many of these people could have been saved by rescue breathing. This is a new, easy way of reviving a person who stopped breathing from any cause by using your own breath. The air you breathe out contains enough oxygen to save a life. There are five simple steps to learn. First, tilt the patient's head back. Second, take a deep breath. Third, make sure the patient's mouth is firmly closed. Fourth, blow through the patient's nose until you see the chest rise. Fifth, listen to the breath coming out while you take another breath, ready to begin the process again. When an unconscious person's head is slumped, the tongue blocks the throat and the air can't get to the lungs. Tilt the head right back and lift the jaw. Now the air passages are open. Start your rescue breathing. There are only five steps to remember. Tilt the head back, shut the patient's mouth, take a breath, blow, listen to the breath coming out. Learn rescue breathing. You never know when you'll have to use it. These are no ordinary sightseers. They are Kiwis. SAS and RNZAF personnel recently stationed in Thailand with United States troops to avert trouble on the Laos border. Thailand is famed for its distinctive temple architecture and for its history as an independent state, both matters of pride to the Thai people. When you're on leave in Bangkok, you'll find entertainment on the streets where two million people work and play. Don't know what it is, but it'll never replace Kiwi beer.
but from the roar and bustle of a city street to the hushed heat of a silent jungle and a practice patrol. Carried out as a joint SAS United States exercise, these patrols simulate combat conditions. If the Cold War in the area warms up, these highly trained New Zealand paratroopers will act as a guerrilla unit behind enemy lines. Then back to the camp on the outskirts of Karat and a little unarmed combat. These boys play rough. After all, they're in a rough game. To fly the paratroopers is the RNZAF's 41 squadron from Singapore. Maintenance work is sticky. It's hot and muggy. Looks like rain. Of course, wise umbrella boy knew this was going to happen. Then the downpour ceases as suddenly as it started. When they've finished, the men from both units can go into the nearby town of Karat. With a population of around 45,000, Karat is Thailand's second largest city and lies about 120 miles from Bangkok. The canals, or klongs as they're called, still solve a lot of transport problems. And rice is the staple diet for the majority of the country's 26 million people. To the eyes of the visiting New Zealander, a picturesque land, but mighty hot. The peasant in his paddy field is the old, timeless Thailand. With Laos at peace again, the old can move on with the new. <laughs> 